In this video, I'm uh, going to introduce the concepts of correlation and R-square. So I'm going to start with a little bit of background. Um, mainly that uh, I've introduced the concepts of some of the squares for a variable in another video. And essentially what this is, is taking the kind of errors of the variable around its mean. So this is assessing how much variation there is in, within a variable. In this case, it's the variable x. And also covariance between two variables. This is similar to the sums of squares in that it looks at the variation in a particular variable, but also looks um, at how that variation relates to the variation of another variable. The setting for this video is that we have a model where we're estimating y based on some estimate of an intercept, uh, an estimate of a slope, and the slope is relative to a variable x1. One thing to note is that that slope variable is computed as the covariation between the two variables. Oops. covariation between the two variables relative to the variation in um, just the independent variable. And this model will give us a sum of the squares regression, which is the sum of the predictions that this model makes relative to the mean uh, squared and, and summed up. So, now I'll introduce correlations. Usually these are um, notated with, uh, as an R with subscripts x and y, or subscripts that denote the variables between which the correlation is uh, with respect to. So, the computation for this is the covariance between the two variables, divided by the sums of squares for each of them individually, and then the square root of that to keep the numerator and denominator on essentially the same scale. One way to think of this is as a rescaled covariance. And that's drawing attention to the fact that this value is bounded below by negative 1 and above by positive 1. And so in terms of interpreting covariance, uh, it reflects the direction, which can be positive or negative, as well as the magnitude of a linear relationship between the variables x and y. Uh, another concept that's closely related to correlation is r squared, which can be computed just by taking the correlation and squaring it. But more generally, r squared is a sum of squared regression from some model over the sums of squares total in the thing that's being uh, estimated by the model. So for the example that I posed in the setting, this would be the sums of squares regression from that model divided by the sums of squares in y. And this can be interpreted as the proportion of variation in the, the variable that we're estimating, which in this case it's y, that is explained or accounted for by the model. So 
So these two concepts are closely related, um, and they're both very dependent on the covariance. So for the remainder of the video, I'm going to explore what happens to these values as the covariance uh, differs in its relation to zero, and as the magnitude of the covariance um, differs, being small, large, or exactly zero, and how these things influence the correlation between the two variables, the proportion of variation accounted for by a model based on these variables, which would be the zero order correlation uh, squared, and also how it influences the estimate of the slope coefficient. So, in one setting, we might have data that look like this. Here, um, the covariance would be negative. The magnitude of the covariance would be large. The correlation between the two variables would be negative and large. And the proportion of variation explained by the model would also be relatively large. And the slope coefficient would be negative and large. Well, and the slope coefficient would be negative. We're, whether it's large or small depends on the scaling of x and y. Um, so I won't talk about the slope coefficient's magnitude, uh, or I won't really interpret the slope coefficient's magnitude. Yeah. So another setting to consider is one where there is a negative relationship between the two variables, but um, it's less pronounced, or that is, uh, if you fit a line to this data, it would explain, or that is, if you fit a line to this data, the variation around the line would be greater than in the previous case. So in this case, the covariance would still be negative. The magnitude of the covariance would be smaller relative to the other case. The correlation would be negative and smaller. Proportion of variation explained by our model or shared between these two variables would be smaller. And the slope coefficient uh, would still be negative. Another setting <clears throat> Another setting is one in which there's essentially no discernible relationship between x and y. Oops. In this case, the covariance would be equal to zero. The magnitude would also be equal to zero. The correlation would be approximately zero. And the proportion of variation explained by a model would also be approximately zero, as well as the um, uh, estimate of the slope parameter that would also be approximately zero. Next, we can consider a situation where x and y are loosely positively correlated. So here, the covariation would be greater than zero. The magnitude of the covariation would still be relatively small. R would also be greater than zero and small. Relatively small, that is. Um, R squared would also be relatively small and the slope coefficient would be greater than zero. Lastly, I'll consider a situation where these points fall almost on a perfect line. The covariance would be greater than zero. The magnitude would be relatively large. Um, the correlation would also be greater than zero and relatively large. The proportion of variation explained would be relatively large. And B1 would be greater than zero. The slope coefficient estimated would be greater than zero. 
So in this video, I introduced correlation and R-square and considered a number of cases and looked at how those would influence the covariance um, and how that would translate into uh, differences in the correlation, the proportion of variation explained, and the slope coefficient. I've reviewed the relationship between covariance and the estimates of the slope coefficient more in depth than a previous video. Uh, and in a future video, I'll, look, I'll dive more into correlations and also talk about part and partial correlations.